A new frontier in exploration. Instead of blasting off into space, where a permanent habitat has been in orbit for over 20 years, how about diving to new depths and building the world's largest underwater research station, essentially creating a marine version of the International Space Station? One man is working on doing just that. Aquanaut, oceanographic explorer, and founder of the Fabian Cousteau Ocean Learning Center, Fabian Cousteau, joins us now live. Fabian, always good to talk to you. So tell us about Proteus and how this idea came about. Good morning, Jen. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. You know, Proteus came about uh, from a long lineage of our family being in, in uh, underwater habitat or the business of underwater habitats, starting with the Conch Shelf series of habitats, which were the subject of the World Without Sun, my grandfather's uh, award-winning show. But more to the point, uh, when uh, I went down to Aquarius, which is the last undersea habitat and spent 31 days there with my team, it became readily evident that we're ignoring the vast majority of our planet for the advancement of science, the advancement of solutions, and of course, for our future. So it stood to reason that we should build an, a state-of-the-art innovative space station underwater. Yeah, and it begs the question is why don't we have this actually? <laughs> so what are you hoping to accomplish and what's the timeline? Well, the timeline, if we had the funding today, and then one of the, the, the challenges, of course, is always fundraising, especially when we're looking at this as a public good platform with the ability to cater to public par uh, private partnerships, a little bit like what we're doing in space. But if we were to, uh, to have the, the entirety of the funding, we could do this in less than three years, install it on site and have it fully operational. You know, we have a handful of underwater stations that have been built in the past, but what is going to make this unique and different than the others? Well, there have been a long lineage of habitats that are usually mission-driven or have had a shelf life that is fairly short. But by building on the pioneering efforts of those previous habitats, including the one we spent time in, Aquarius, we're able to not only leverage what we know, but also integrate innovative technologies, materials, and of course, cater to a larger research group for much longer periods of time at the bottom of the sea, and deploy ROVs, AUVs, even have a submarine docking station so that we can extend that range. We've, you know, the ocean represents 99% of our living space, and we've explored less than 5% of that. So it stands to reason that this is Pandora's box of all sorts of new science and discoveries. You spent 31 days in the Aquarius Reef Base off Key Largo. Um, you know, how, how does that affect the human body? Will, it be, will you be able to stay on this underwater um, research station for longer than that? Well, if I'm not mistaken, you came to visit for a few minutes uh, while uh, while during Mission 31. But Mission 31 uh, really showed the parameters within which the human physiology and the human psychology can function in a confined environment, uh, in an extreme environment for extended periods of time. And there have been studies done on this in the past, but in controlled environments, not so much in a habitat. So we're looking forward to extending that knowledge. But essentially, the human body is an amazing thing that can adapt to the various pressures, in case three pressures of atmosphere, for long periods of time. Now, the human, the human brain is a different story. And of course, we have to be able to train for both the physical and the mental rigors of staying underwater for extended periods of time. Looking forward to keeping track of what's happening with this. Thank you so much for sharing with us, Fabian Cousteau. We will be checking back in with you again.